I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we solve the mechanism for chemical transformations. In last week's video, I proposed this mechanism for you to solve for this week's video. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it on your own. And make sure you stick around to the end where I'll show you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This chemical transformation actually comes from a paper published in the Journal of American Chemical Society by the Mark Levin Group at University of Chicago, where they showed that they could use chlorodiazarenes, which is what this molecule is called, where they showed that they could transform things like pyrazoles into pyrimidines. One of the key steps is that you could turn this chlorodiazarene into a halocarbene precursor. And the first step in that mechanism would be to liberate nitrogen gas by creating a carbene at this carbon position, at this benzyl position. In doing so, you would generate that halocarbene species, which would be stabilized being by the benzyl group, to make what is called a carbene. Now importantly for those unfamiliar, carbenes can act as two different types, either a Fischer carbene or a Schrock carbene. And depending on the type of carbene that's formed, these carbenes can either act as an electrophile or a nucleophile. In this case, in fact, it's acting as an electrophile meaning that the nucleophilic nitrogen with this lone pair will come and attack that carbon position. And this may seem counterintuitive because you likely have only seen the existence of two electrons existing as a lone pair of electrons. However, carbenes are much different compounds. From here, this generates a new carbon to nitrogen bond at that position that is going to leave behind both a negatively charged species and a positively charged species on this molecule. So this nitrogen will become positively charged because now it has four different bonds going to it because remember that double bond is still there and now this carbon species is going to be negatively charged because that those two electrons are still present at that position so therefore this would be the intermediate formed after the first step from here the electrons can move about the system causing an rearrangement to occur so the pi electrons are first going to go between the carbon nitrogen bond which is going to move over these pi electrons which is then going to move over these pi electrons, and that's actually what's going to break the nitrogen-nitrogen bond to generate a neutral nitrogen species here. And once this has happened, now we see that that nitrogen-nitrogen bond, which has broken, is going to allow us to insert a carbon, which is what exists in our final product. So now that we've broken that nitrogen-nitrogen bond, our next intermediate is going to contain that movement of those pi electrons and our nitrogen-nitrogen bond is going to be free because now we have a double bond here, a double bond here, and there is now a new imine formed between these two species. So now we have this as our intermediate. Now importantly, imines are electrophilic at the carbon position due to the electronegativity difference between carbon and nitrogen. This means that this lone pair of electrons can actually attack at that carbon position moving these pi electrons up to the nitrogen species. And this is how we reform the six-member ring where now there's a nitrogen to carbon to nitrogen, just like we've drawn in our arrows here. Now importantly, these pi electrons which traveled up to nitrogen can come back down to reform the imine, and in doing so, that's gonna be effectively an addition elimination reaction where the chloride is going to leave as a good leaving group. So once those pi electrons come back down, that kicks off the chloride as a good leaving group, which is gonna be important because we need that counter ion of the chloride negatively charged anion to balance out what is going to now be a positively charged nitrogen. Now we can draw our final intermediate, which is going to be most of the way to our final product. So we have our six-membered ring, which has now been formed because we have opened the nitrogen-nitrogen bond and then inserted a carbon into that. And we still have our positively charged nitrogen, but now we have that chloride anion to balance that out. And that is going to allow us to generate what ultimately becomes our final product following the loss of HCl. So after HCl is liberated and we get a tautomerization, we end up generating our final product. And again, if you're interested in seeing some of the DFT or density functional theory calculations that they did to support this mechanism, then I would encourage you to check out the publication by the Levin Group in JAX, or Journal of American Chemical Society, which was published in 2022. So this is very new chemistry. So how'd you do? I'd love to hear what you came up with as a comment down below after you liked this video. For next week, I'd like you to solve this chemical transformation and see if you can come up with the mechanism. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the solution on next Monday's video.